Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to our third webinar in our Transfer Student Week series. Today, we're shining a spotlight on pathways to recreation and leisure studies. My name is Matt Brown, and I'm an undergraduate admissions officer here at Waterloo. Joining me, to, joining me today is my colleague Pam from the Faculty of Health. I'll get Pam to introduce herself in just a moment, but first I wanted to acknowledge that much of our work takes place on the traditional territory of the Neutral, Anishinaabe, and Haudenosaunee peoples. The University of Waterloo is situated on the Haldeman Tract, land granted in a legally binding treaty to the Six Nations that includes six miles on each side of the Grand River. Waterloo's active work towards reconciliation takes place across our campuses and is centralized in our Office of Indigenous Relations. I would invite everyone watching to spend some time learning about the land you're located on as well. I'll now pass it over to Pam, who will share more about recreation and leisure studies. All right, thanks so much, Matt. I'm very happy to be here and share a little bit more about our three majors in recreation and leisure studies. So my title is the recruitment coordinator in the Faculty of Health, which basically means that I am the main contact for students interested in any of our majors that fall under this faculty, including the three majors under recreation and leisure studies. OK, so just to share a little bit more about uh, why students choose to study recreation at Waterloo. Uh, to start with, we are leaders in this field, so we've been offering this program for more than 50 years. We were the first recreation program in Canada, and what that means for our current students is that we've had time to grow, develop expertise and a reputation in the field, and we've had time to develop lots of different courses you can take to really tailor your degree towards your future career goals as well as your interests. At Waterloo, experiential learning is a cornerstone of what we have. So in addition to having co-op available for all of our recreation majors, uh, and in co-op you'd alternate four months of study with four months of paid work in the field, we also have experiential learning built into many of our courses. So things like uh, practicum courses, internships, as well as courses that go on field trips or give you the opportunity to connect with industry partners. So that's something that really helps us stand out as well as helps our students really understand what it's actually like to work in the industry and make those connections so that you're more successful when you graduate. We also have small first year and upper year tutorials and classes that help you get to know other students. Rec students are some of the most active, involved students on campus. They're usually the people up to do different activities and participate in experiences because they want to create those opportunities for other people. And so we like to make lots of opportunities for our students, and we do have a lot of transfer students in this program as well, to really make connections with one another and, and build relationships so that they're uh, combining a, a really great academic experience with a great social experience too. All right, so our three majors that students can choose from are our Bachelor of Arts in Recreation and Leisure Studies, a Bachelor of Arts in Recreation and Sport Business, and a Bachelor of of arts in therapeutic recreation. You'll be put in the major you choose from day one in the program, but you do apply to recreation and leisure studies and then pick which one of the three you want as your subject of major interest. A bit later, Matt will cover how to apply to the program, but I did want to note that you would apply to recreation and leisure studies and your offer will say recreation and leisure studies, but you'll be put in which of these three subject of major interests you pick right from day one uh, upon accepting your offer. OK, so just to give you a little bit of information about the different majors. So in recreation and leisure studies, uh, that one lets you focus on improving health and well-being through essential leisure activities. So uh, it's it's the most flexible major, which basically means you can you have the most flexibility to really tailor the courses to what you want to do. It allows lots of room should you want to double major with another area of study on campus. So we have students who do double majors in things like communication studies. We have students who double major in things like social development studies. So it's fairly easy to fit that in. Uh, we also have students who will have lots of room to take a minor if you don't have room for a second double major. So in recreation and leisure studies, you really study and understand the role recreation and leisure plays in community and individual lives. So it's maybe the right fit for you if you do have a broad amount of interests and want to dabble in a little bit of everything. 
Uh, or you have another kind of secondary area of study that you also want to pursue. There is an optional volunteer practicum course that you can take as well as part of this major. Right. For recreation and sport business, uh, that one you get a solid business foundation, so courses that would help you out regardless of which area of business you go into. Courses like accounting and financial management, courses like human resources management, uh, how uh, economics, things like that, but then you also get a foundation in the recreation and sport field and your rec and sport business courses, which are hybrid, taking those business skills, taking the recreation and sport knowledge and combining it on how to apply those in a business setting. Uh, in within recreation and sport business, we also have a practicum placement where which is an optional course where you can actually get experience in in a setting in a recreation sport or community setting and have that count back towards your degree. We also have lots of professors and course projects that are tied to industry. So, for example, this photo was actually taken at during a fourth year recreation sport business course where the students went on a field trip to Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment and they actually participated in programming that was run for at risk youth in a low income community. And then later that day went on to a Toronto Argonauts game and got to network with professionals in the field. So it it uh, we try to build that into a lot of the courses is combining kind of the fundamental university knowledge with applications in the field. All right, and our third major is therapeutic recreation. So in that major, uh, students are basically using recreation and leisure to enhance the quality of life. So our graduates often work with special populations such as older adults, children with disabilities, adults with mental health diagnoses to enhance their overall health and well-being. So this program features world class digital simulations and has accessibility training, which is growing ever so more so important in the industry, as well as hands on practice with clients group client groups of your interest. So whether that's older adults or children with disability, you do get some hands on experience as well. This program also has required experiential learning built in, so there is a required practicum course and an internship. So the internship is normally full time consecutive 15 week therapeutic recreation internship. And the reason we have these mandatory experiential learning opportunities is because uh, the program can prepare students after they graduate to pursue their designation as a certified therapeutic recreation specialist. So this designation is known across Canada and the US and pursuing the designation can help with gaining employment in hospitals and clinical health facilities after graduation. Now, sometimes if you're coming right from college and you've already done a therapeutic recreation program, you might be wondering, well, why would I upgrade uh, to a degree program? And while some employers might not uh, differentiate between someone with a uh, diploma in therapeutic recreation versus a degree. Often we find in kind of major city settings or major employers like hospitals, uh, they might prefer the degree or have a higher level of uh, responsibility for degree holders compared to uh, diploma holders. So that is something that can help open a few more doors should you choose to upgrade to the full degree. As well, uh, a lot of those hospitals or clinical settings might also require a certified therapeutic rec recreation specialist designation. Uh, in the photo here we have uh, Rachel who completed our program and she was actually a college transfer student once upon a time when she came in. She was very successful in the program and then went on to further studies as a child life specialist and now she works at SickKids Hospital in Toronto uh, just making sure that the children who are stuck staying in the hospital are having as positive an experience as possible given the situation as well as supporting the families. So she runs a television program that's interactive where the students can uh, fully participate. They can call in, they can make recommendations. So just when they're stuck in the room, it gives them kind of a break in their day from the monotony of a hospital stay. So a really rewarding uh, career. The next uh, slide, this shows a photo from one of our first year courses. We we had it paused for the pandemic, but uh, now that we're returning to more in-person opportunities, we are really looking forward to getting back to more field trips and experiences in person for our students. This photo was taken uh, during our rec 
120. It's a first year program management and evaluation class where students would actually go out to participate in a recreation program. In this case, it was at a overnight camp just outside of the city. They get to know their cohort really well by staying overnight and participate in the programming. And then later in the semester, they'd actually go to a local community center and put on a recreation program and evaluate it and see how it's run. So not only do you learn about what should go into a program, you actually get to participate in one and evaluate it after. So you get really good experience that you can then transfer uh, to future careers. All right, speaking of careers, uh, there's a lot of different routes you can pursue with a degree in recreation and leisure studies. So the first one, is, the first area is pursued mostly by our therapeutic recreation majors. They often go into healthcare and social services type settings. So an example that I already mentioned is recreation therapist. That's a pretty natural transition after completing our program. We also have students who go on to complete a master's degree in occupational therapy and then become occupational therapists as there is an a lot of overlap between what they learn in recreational therapy, working with special populations, and what uh, you look, study in the field of occupational therapy. As well, uh, a third job that I mentioned that uh, one of our graduates is doing, actually many of our graduates, is the child life specialist type role. The next uh, main kind of industry or area of, of employment that people often pursue is the business setting. So especially if you're in recreation and sport business, you're getting those fundamental business skills that are transferable to any industry, although a lot of our graduates do work in a recreation or sport setting. So working as an analyst, a marketer, starting your own business as an entrepreneur, all of those are, are definitely options that students get fundamental skills towards. Next on, we have government and public administration. So working for a city, every city in the country has a recreation program and rec recreation facilities that they need qualified people to be able to run. So everything that we're doing in our free time that we look forward to on the weekends, it takes a whole team of people to make that happen. And so it the careers stemming from our programs can definitely uh, lead directly into some of those roles. So doing recreation programming, uh, working as a city recreation coordinator, managing facilities, an event manager. So during the pandemic, we were sad that a lot of community events were not happening. Now they're all kind of starting back up and we're very excited to participate in them. So event management, which is also a minor available to our recreation majors and actually any Waterloo student, but offered by the Recreation and Leisure Studies Department is, is a very popular career path for many of our graduates. Finally, uh, the Recreation and Sport Management field is another important career path. So we have graduates who go on to pursue leadership roles for professional or semi-professional sports teams, uh, manage facilities. One of our graduates is a game presentation manager for the LA Clippers. So kind of coordinating the whole fan experience from the moment you buy a ticket to a game to the time you leave the stadium. Uh, so really creating those experiences that we all look forward to uh, or coordinating programs in recreation and sport. All right, so next I will turn things back over to Matt to talk about how to get into these programs, if any of that piqued your interest. Thanks, Pam. So like Pam mentioned, I'm gonna briefly discuss the admission requirements for Rec and Leisure, and this applies to all three of the majors that Pam's been talking about so far. So what we're looking for is um, an academic English course, and this can be satisfied either through a grade 12 U level English with a minimum grade of 70 or an equivalent course from your post-secondary studies. Most college recreation and leisure studies or therapeutic recreation programs typically have a first year, you know, English communication or writing course that would satisfy this requirement. Again, a minimum final grade of 70% is required. Uh, then for those of you that are completing a one year college certificate program, um, we're looking for an overall cumulative average of at least 80%. And for those who are completing a two or three year diploma, we're looking for a cumulative overall average of at least 75% to be considered for admission. Now, in addition to grades, there are some additional components and not all of them are required. So some of them do depend on your particular situation. 
So the admission information form or AIF, as well as your high school transcript, those are required for all students. So you would need to make sure that you do complete the AIF and submit your high school transcript, because that is something that uh, the committee will look for when they're evaluating your application. We're also going to want to see the detailed syllabus for your post-secondary courses, particularly if you've taken any courses outside of your recreation and leisure studies program, because we want to make sure that we're evaluating all of your prior learning. You may be required to submit an English language proficiency test, um, and you can check out our website for additional information on that. So once you have been ass assessed and you've been admitted to the program and you confirm your offer, so you're going to join Waterloo in September, our next step in the process is to review your prior learning for transfer credits. So you can receive up to 10.0 units of transfer credit, which is equivalent to 20 Waterloo courses. A, a rec degree is typically made up of 40 courses, so this fulfills up to half of your degree. The number of credits you're eligible for will have an impact on co-op eligibility. Transfer credit or transfer students who receive more than 13 courses or 6.75 units would not be eligible for co-op. We do recommend when you're applying that you still apply for co-op if you are interested in co-op, because if for, for some reason you're not admitted to co-op, like say you have too many transfer credits, we will automatically consider you for the regular stream of, of the recreation program. Once your transfer credit assessment is complete, we will send you a copy of it by email and we'll copy in your academic advisor, Sarah. Sarah is an amazing resource who's going to help you plan your next steps, including not only your fall classes, but the classes that will take, uh, take you through the rest of your degree. So how to apply? Um, applying is all done online through the Ontario University's Application Centre website. So that's ouac.on.ca. Uh, as a transfer student, you'll be completing the 105 application. And the process is going to be very similar to how you would have applied initially to college using OCAS. So as Pam mentioned earlier, um, you're going to want to select Recreation and Leisure Studies as your program. And then from there, you'll be able to indicate which of the three majors really uh, piques your interest the most. The deadline to apply is February 1st, 2023. Depending on our volume of applications, we may extend that deadline, um, but that is the deadline that you should be aiming for is to apply by February 1st. Your documents are due by February 17th, and for some of you, I realize that you may be still enrolled in courses at that time during your winter academic term, but not to worry. Submit the grades that you do have available at that point, and then once your winter grades are available, make sure you follow up and submit those as well for consideration. And I'm going to pass it back over to Pam, who's going to talk a little bit more about staying connected and finding some finding out more information about REC. Thank you. Yeah, so we have the contact information for different contacts at Waterloo that you may want to reach out to as you go through. Uh, I've listed here the admission officers, so they can be reached at health.admission at uwaterloo.ca should you have specific questions about admission requirements or the application process. If you have more questions about the program, where it could lead you, what courses you take, you can reach out to health at uwaterloo.ca or the extension listed. That actually is monitored by me primarily, so you can reach out to me and I'm happy to answer those questions. I'd also encourage you to visit campus if you're able to do so. Uh, we have lots of options for you to visit either in person or virtually. We have an open house in the fall every year, usually the first Saturday in November, as well as mid-March. So those are a great opportunity to come and see the facilities that you'd be using as a recreation student. We also run tours of campus and of our Faculty of Health uh, throughout the year, most weeks of the year. So. Uh, you can go to our tours and events website just to see virtual campus tours, in-person tours, events coming up, uh, and see what works for your schedule that you can make it to. We also have ways for you to connect with a current student if you want to find out what it's actually like to be in the program. So that uh, link is there as well. Great, thanks Pam. 
And that concludes our formal webinar on Pathways to Recreation and Leisure Studies. Thanks again for tuning in. Our final transfer webinar, a spotlight on Pathways to Social Work, will take place tomorrow, so make sure you're checking your email. Take good care, everyone.